What's going on everybody? It's Sean and welcome to your second Fusion 360 tutorial. And in this tutorial we're actually going to be doing some practice uh, CAD models. So what I've done is I've actually gone on Google, done a little search, and we're just going to go ahead and go through the, the process of making this in Fusion 360. Okay, so we're going to get you, you know, used to the environment in Fusion. How do you get started? How do you actually go ahead and make this part? So for those of you who are familiar with most CAD software, this shouldn't be too challenging for you. Uh, and if you're a beginner, you know, that's the whole point of these tutorials. And uh, I hope it's pretty easy to follow along. So what I've done here is I've actually gone ahead and saved this as an image. And I've gone ahead and pulled it up on the side so that we can see it as I can in here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do whenever you're in Fusion and you're ready to actually CAD a part up um, is you first need to have a project that you're going to be working in. Okay, in my case, I've already created my first year design project here, but um, you can, if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and create a new project. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I don't have anything in here right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit File and hit New Design. Okay, that brings me to a new untitled page. And the first process to actually kind of decomposing this part, and for those of you who haven't done CAD before, um, what we really start out with is start with creating some 2D reference. Okay, and we are going to do some sort of um, 3D feature to the 2D sketch and then start to build off of that until we finally have the model we want. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. It'll all make sense pretty soon. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just start off by creating this sketch right here. Okay, It seems to be the base of this whole part here, so I'm just going to start with that first. So in Fusion, first thing we're going to do is create a sketch. We do that by hitting this Create Sketch tab up here. And you can see Fusion prompts us with uh, which plane we want to perform this sketch on. Okay. Uh, in our case, I'm going to select this face right here because that will, you can see that that is the perspective we're given right now. And in order to actually create this sketch in this perspective, we would need to select this face right here. Okay. So you can see when I clicked it, we were shifted and rotated to this plane. All right, so this thing's kind of getting in our way. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the X button. If I ever need to see it again, I can just hit the show data panel again. And I'll bring it back up. Okay, so you can see some numbers here, and these just indicate the unit of measurement we're using. In our case, this is in millimeters. And you can see this part is actually all dimensioned in millimeters. But if you ever need to change that at any point, you can just go to document settings right here click this drop down and you can see the mill the units selected right now are millimeters but if you need to change that you can just hit change and select whatever you need okay I'm gonna go ahead and select millimeters and okay let's get right into it all right so probably the most common uh, of the tools here this section right here is actually dedicated to all of the different uh, little uh, little vector tools or uh, lines that we can use to create different uh, sketch 2d sketches um, the most common one is probably going to be your line tool this way you can actually create individual lines and you know like let's say we want to make this line right here you can just specify okay I need it to be 10 millimeters and if I wanted to give a degree value to it say 45 you can see that it automatically gives me that value I'm going to leave it at zero hit enter Okay, you can see when I put the line down, there's this little dimension tool associated with it. This is pretty helpful if ever I need to change it in the future. I recommend having as many of these as possible, just because if you need to change something in the future, you can just double click on it and give it a new value. So if I do it, 15, easy, easily changes. Okay, leave that at 10. And in our case, I could go ahead and keep making each individual line here but it's actually kind of counterintuitive. In my head, what I'd have to do is keep subtracting each of these values to figure out what each of these, the length from here to here is. That can be kind of annoying. So what I'll do instead is get rid of this line. 
and actually start with a rectangle. Okay, so I will give a rectangle from this point to this point right here. Okay, so looking off of this sketch, you can see that the height of this is 135 and the width of it is 10. So I'm going to give this 135 and then I'm going to hit tab to switch to the other uh, input and hit 10 and hit enter. Okay, and you can see immediately we are given kind of exactly what we want. And the next thing we're going to specify is this, these dimensions right here, uh, 55, the 75, and each of these. Uh, we actually won't need this uh, 10.5 at the moment. We can use that later. But um, for things that are, you know, in our case, are just, they don't actually, are, aren't going to be used for the actual sketch itself. If I'm just making a line, let's say I want to, you know, specify the center point of this line, and I'm using a line like this, I can just use a construction line just by clicking this. And you can see it now is a dotted line instead of a solid line, okay? The big difference between that is that when I go to actually, you know, do a 3D feature on this, the construction lines will not show up. You can see that as I hover over this region, the blue indicates this whole area here. Now, if I use a solid line instead of this construction line at this exact same point, you can see that as I hover over this region and hover over this region, these two are separate of each other. This only happens when you are using a regular line and not a construction line. Okay, so if you ever need to just, you know, indicate a specific dimension or a specific line, these little construction lines are pretty helpful. Okay. In our case, I'm going to use them to actually mark some dimensions as indicated on here. Um, so you can see that as I move across this line, you'll see a little triangle show up. Okay, These triangles will actually indicate... I actually have an extra construction line here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the delete button on that. And you can see as I hover over it, where the triangle shows up is actually the center point of this line right here. Okay, if I'm going to use this center point, and using a construction line, I'm actually going to specify this length right here. But because I'm starting from the center point, I need to use half of that value. So Fusion will actually allow you to do math inside of the unit, I mean inside of the input. So if I say divided by 2, it automatically scales it to what I need it to be. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've got my value right there. And then the next value is 75. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to say 75 divided by 2. And I'm going to hit enter. And I'm just going to start reorganizing these lines so it looks cleaner. Okay, so I have the two lines here. And make sure I got this right. 55 and then 75 divided by 2. Yep, that is correct. Okay, so there needs to be a solid line going from here to here. Okay, and that will create this little line right here. Okay, so I'm going to switch to a normal line. Okay, and you can see that I have, following the 75, a line that stretches outward by 10. So I'm going to follow this line. You can see the dotted line helps me find my next point. I'm just going to type in 10 and hit enter. And you can see the 10 shows up. Okay, and how far down does this neat line need to go? And that is indicated by the 75. So I can just type from here to here 75. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and mark where the 75 comes back in. So right there. Now I just need to create this line going from here to here, okay? And I'm going to do it the exact same way that I created this line here. And I'm just going to use a construction line. I'm going to specify that 55 divided by 2. Okay, so again, we're creating this line right there. 
just like that okay so in essence we have each of the sections that we need and they are all separated from each other so if I hit the escape button you can see that this section this section and this section make up this total that we need okay but you can see that I don't really need this section right here so what I can do is actually get rid of these these lines that of are no use to me but in our case if I ever needed to change this later on like let's say I needed to make this maybe not 55 maybe say I write it wrong maybe 65 you can see I can easily make adjustments in here so I recommend not to read the lines okay and we're gonna go ahead and finish sketch okay I'm gonna go ahead and change the perspective this little box right here you can change whatever perspective you want to view of the sketch you can just click on different points here okay so we have a 2d sketch here now we need to be able to do a 3d feature on it okay now the way we're going to do that is by hitting the extrude button and selecting the regions we want to extrude out okay in our case we want to extrude these sections Okay, all I did was select this extrude button and click on the regions that I wanted and then I started to drag this line out. You can see that it is dragged out by 90 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see that there is a negative whenever I move backward but when I move forward I get a positive. In our case I want to move it backwards so I maintain the same perspective and I'm going to say negative 90. Okay, I'm going to hit enter and you can see I immediately already have this base of the part right here okay the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and create is this region right here now the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to create a new sketch but instead of using these point these planes right here I can actually have access to creating a sketch on any single one of these faces I'm gonna just create one right here okay what I'm gonna do is start by extruding out a rectangular prism here and then I'm going to do this operation known as a fillet okay the fillet will actually round these corners to these points as we see okay so let's go ahead and do that so you can see that when I bring it to a corner I can I can select that and you can see it automatically snaps to the 75 which is good that's what we need it to do and then the next thing that we're interested in is knowing what the actual width of this this needs to be so if you look at this the width isn't actually specified directly but if I look at this you can actually see a dimension going from here to here and that's the radius okay so whenever you see an R that specifies the radius of the part uh, of that dimension so this radius from here to here which is actually the same radius from here to here is 20 millimeters that means that the diameter from here to here is 40 millimeters okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select this to 40 and hit enter okay so I pretty much have what I want so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish sketch I'm gonna hit extrude click on the section I want I can drag this up you can see that this is dragged up by 45 millimeters plus the radius from here to here again because that radius from here to here is also the radius from here to here okay so I'm going to say 45 plus 20 you can see it does the math for me and I can just go ahead and hit enter all right so it looks a little bit like it but not quite what I want if you ever want to go back to the original orientation, you can simply click this house button and it will immediately bring you back to the view you'll. Okay, so I need to be able to round these edges and currently that's not the case. So what I'm going to do is use the modify tab. There's something known as a fillet. If I click this, I can actually go ahead and click on each of these edges here. I can start to drag this and you can see the curve starts to appear. Now this value here indicates the radius of that curve. When I get to about 20 millimeters, you can see this is a complete circle, which is exactly what they have. The radius in this case was 20, and we have 20 right there. And we can go ahead and hit OK. All right, so we have a part looking very, very similar 
to what we have so far. The next feature we're going to go ahead and recreate are these little triangles coming off right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch. But in our case, I ideally would like to start my sketch right here. But you can see there's no feature that allows me to do that right now. So what I need to do is actually create that sketch plane. So to do that, I'm just going to hit Escape to get out of this sketch. Create, and then I'm going to go to Construct. So under Construct, there are multiple different ways that we can create planes. Now, probably one of the most useful things we can use is called the Offset Plane. If I click Offset Plane, it's asking me first to specify the plane that I want to offset from. So I want to offset from this plane, and I want to drag it back by the amount that is dragged back. So in our case, it's dragged back by 37. So I'm going to say negative 37 to move it back. 37. Okay. And then I'm going to hit OK. All right. So I have a sketch plane now. I can go ahead and create a sketch on this plane. And you can see it goes from this corner to that corner. Okay. So I'm just going to make a line. But notice that when I'm trying to create a sketch now, I don't have access to locking to any of these lines here. And that's because these these lines actually don't exist on this sketch plane just yet. So what we want to do is actually, we have that sketch plane. If I actually, you can see that I can't actually see the plane anymore, but if I hit escape and I use these drop downs, you can see these little eye icons actually toggle the visibility of that feature. So construction will always have all of your planes in there. Okay, so as you create a new plane, it will go under the construction uh, folder. Okay, so you can see this feature right here doesn't actually exist on this plane here. So what I need to do is use under create, I'm going to go to project. Okay, what project will allow me to do is it will take a specific feature on this sketch right here and project it onto this plane here. So say I'm interested in, you know, projecting this whole feature right here. If I click this once and then I hit OK, what it goes ahead and does is it projects that whole sketch onto this sketch right here. All right. What this will allow me to do now is have access to creating a line. Oop. So now it actually snaps from point to point. And you can see that I can actually hover over. Let me go ahead and get rid of this plane because I don't need it anymore. But you can see this region now turns blue, which means that now it's available for me to extrude. Now, I have this here, but I also have this bottom feature that I also need to do as well. So I'm just going to create a line from here to here. And then I hit Finish Sketch. And let's go ahead and do the extrude. I'm going to hit I actually hit the E button, and that automatically is a hotkey for the extrude. But you can just hit extrude. Okay, click on the two regions I'm interested in, and just dragging them out, I can actually give it a value. So you can see in here, it's currently negative 5, but you can see in here, it's specified as 6. Negative 6, and that's given me my two little wings right here. Okay, let's go ahead and do this little wing right here. All right, so we're running into the same problem. We don't actually have that sketch, okay? But you can see that this feature is actually located in the dead center of this part. So it's equidistant from here as it is from here. So what I'm going to use is construct again, and I'm going to use mid plane, okay? Mid plane will allow me to construct a plane in be directly in between two other planes. So I'm going to select this plane, and then I'm going to click and drag this block until I get to this bottom orientation. I'm going to click this bottom plane. And you can see that the corresponding plane that was created goes directly through the center of this part. And that is our mid plane. I'm going to hit OK and great. So I have a mid plane now. So now I can go ahead and create a sketch on this mid plane. And you can see this is my orientation. But just like I said before, I don't actually have access to locking to a lot of these features. So what I'm going to do is first project. So I'm going to project using this. And I need this as well. And so I projected all of these. And I hit OK. And you can see that this 
goes from this point right here all the way to the center right there. So what I'm going to do is click from here, do right there. Okay, and you can see I actually it's blue now, so I have the ability to extrude this. If it does not turn blue, remember that means that you cannot extrude it. As much as you're, you will try, it will not allow you to select it during the extrude. Okay, gone ahead and selected extrude. I'm going to go ahead and click on this line, but notice that if I'm in the center, I drag by six. This is not symmetric anymore, and we need to maintain this to be symmetric. So instead of using the directionality of this of being one-sided, I'm going to say symmetric. Okay, and you can see the measurement. I can either specify doing like 10 millimeters this way, and it will also do 10 millimeters the other way, or I can just give it the whole length and tell it the whole length, which in our case is six. So I'm going to say six, and then I'm going to simply hit OK. All right, so we are very close to having our complete part done. Now we're just going to go ahead and finish all of the holes in this part. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, create a sketch. I'm going to start here, and we're going to create this, this circle here. Now if I create a circle, you can see it automatically locks to the circle based on right here. And that's this circle right here, so I'm going to click. And you can see that the radius specified here is 20. Now when you see a circle with a line through it like that, that specifies that the di this is a diameter. So this is saying the diameter of this hole is 20 millimeters. Okay, that is the only feature on the sketch, and I'm going to hit the extrude button. But instead of dragging this all the way through the part, just like this, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, under extent, instead of saying distance, I'm going to say to object. And then I'm going to specify the ending face. Okay, this is going to be really nice. Because if I adjust the actual length of this to be something that was not the distance that I specified of the extrude, it will not cut all the way. But this will guarantee that regardless of whatever the length from here to here is, it will always end at this face. Okay? All right. So the last feature we have left to do is our holes right here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is create a sketch. Whoops, seemed to already specify. I'm just going to go ahead and finish. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this little sketch that was made because I didn't actually use it. So I'm going to create sketch. I'm actually going to click on the sketch plane right here. All right, so we now need to specify each of these holes and where they're located. Okay, now we did this one before, but you can see that. We didn't use this, this number before, but this is 105 from the center. So I don't have access to this feature, so I first need to project. I'm going to use project. I'm going to select a lot of these. I'm going to hit OK. And this will get me access to the midpoint right there. I'm going to go ahead and use a construction line. And I'm going to give it the value 10 5 divided by 2 because it's at the center and okay so that's at the height it used to be and you can see that the first line goes out 20 so I'm going to say 20 oops 20 and then the next center hole is at 50 from the 20 so I'm going to say 50 awesome and so now I can go ahead and create the circles, but I don't want to do it as a construction. Remember, this is a feature that I want to be able to extrude. So I click, and you can see that the whole diameter in this case is 12. So I'm going to say 12, hit enter, hit 12, and hit enter. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So we know that these are both at the same height. So what I can do is actually carry on I'm just going to go ahead and from this point right here, making sure I'm using construction, I'm going to use that same dimension I used before, which is 1005 divided by 2. Then we're going to go out by 20. And then out 
by 50. Okay, so last thing to do, add our holes here to here. Say 12, enter, 12, hit enter. Now we're going to finish our sketch. Last thing to do, just do our extrudes on each one of these, pull them out. But, like I said before, instead of giving it a specific distance, I will specify the extent to be object and then click on the face I want it to end and hit OK. Alright, so we pretty much have the exact same part here that we do before. Okay, now this is one way we could have created this part. Okay, now looking back, let's go ahead and look what we, we did. Looking all the way. So down here, one of Fusion's most useful features is this little history bar. Okay, this history bar indicates all of the different steps we took to make the part. You can see we created a fillet. See we can't actually see the plane, but you can see that a plane was created after this step. We created a sketch, created an extrusion, mid plane, and all the way through. So if at any point in your project you're not happy with how you created, or you you're not happy with a feature that you did, you can actually edit the specific feature by right clicking on the feature and hitting edit feature. Or let's say you know, uh, you know I want to go all the way back to when this was a thing. Okay, and you can actually right click, and you can actually hit roll history marker here. Okay, and actually not clicking this right. But you can actually, if you click on the right hand side of the history marker, you can actually delete all of the features after the history marker. And you can revert back to a different point. Okay, I'm just going to hit Control Z, and I have access to everything again. Okay, and that makes up our first uh, run through of creating a part. We'll have some more uh, so that you get some some more experience creating some parts in Fusion. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, and have a great day.